Ready to take your photography business to the next level with professional model release forms? Being a professional photographer should be easy, right? Just point and shoot the camera and that's it. Actually, many professional photographers will tell you that taking great pictures is often more complicated than that. People are great subjects for photos, but issues can arise if they claim that you used a photo without their permission or that you benefited from the photo and should share the profits. This is why it's important to put the proper safeguards in place before you aim your camera at someone. This is where model release forms come in handy. I'm Alex with JotForm, and in today's video, we're going to dive deep into model release forms. Stick around and we'll discuss how you can make the perfect model release form for your business. A comprehensive model release form serves as a photography contract between a photographer and a model who has been asked or recruited to appear in images. More importantly, these forms generally function as liability waivers when you want to publish photos with models in them for marketing or other commercial purposes. Although their use can vary by circumstance, model release forms generally outline how the photos that include models can be used, repurposed, or published. These forms can also outline the general scope and terms of the photo's use. Like many other things in life, it's easy to start your model release form research by Googling it. There's a pretty good chance you'll come across a number of templates on the first page of results. There are a few good reasons why your form shouldn't deviate too far from what you'll find readily available on the internet. For starters, privacy is super important. While privacy laws vary by state, publicly available templates usually err on the side of caution and consider the most stringent laws. Since some states have more specific definitions of privacy or provide greater protections for people who appear in published photos, it's important to review the privacy laws for your state and seek legal advice for more specific questions. Second, many templates already in existence include specific legal language that gives photographers broad freedom over their photos. Last, in many cases, templates have already been received by legal professionals or used by photographers for some time without issues. Perhaps you want to build a model release form from scratch. This option is definitely doable, but you'll need to take extra care along the way. Make sure to have a lawyer review your form to ensure there are no loose ends. Never mislead people to get a model release form signed. If a model or client challenges the use of your photo, your form may be invalidated because facts about how the photos would be used were either hidden or misrepresented. To avoid making any mistakes, Follow this rundown of model release form necessities. You'll want to include your name and business name, your business address, a release of all claims against your company, whether you want to release claims from other companies that buy use or obtain the license for your photos, and a list of potential claims covered by the model release form. This could include copyright infringement, defamation, invasion of privacy, and rights of publicity. You'll also want to include compensation terms, whether the model will be allowed to inspect the photos prior to publications, the name of the model as well as whether their name can be published, whether the release form has an expiration date, an affirmation that the model understands and agrees to the terms, an acknowledgement that the model signing is at least 18 years of age and if not, that a guardian signature is present. There should also be a place for witness signatures as well as dates indicating when the form was signed. Now that you know the important ins and outs of what to include in a model release form, let's talk about when you should use your new form. The best rule of thumb is to have models or clients sign release forms before any photos are ever taken. If you don't take care of this prior to the shoot, you may have a hard time reaching people afterwards and they may not want to sign your form. This would be a big waste of your time and energy and money. There are a few exceptions to this rule, but once again, it's super important to consult legal professionals about any gray areas that may be unique to specific use cases. To find out whether your case may fall under one of these exceptions, you should consider the following four key questions. The first question to consider is this, where was the photo taken? If your photo was taken in a public space where people don't have a reasonable expectation of privacy, then a release isn't needed. These public spaces are typically public sidewalks and parks. It's courteous, however, to give people a heads up if they don't realize that you're taking their picture. 
Places like schools, restaurants, or shops on private property aren't considered to be public just because it's open to the public. For photos taken in these places, you may need to get permission to take and obtain signed release forms. Even if someone's face and recognizable features are obscured, there are times when the background of a photo can hint at a person's identity. For instance, a shopkeeper may be identified because of a store's unique layout and the surrounding neighborhood visible in the photo. The second question to consider is this. Is a person or their distinguishing characteristics easily recognizable in your photo? At first, the answer seems simple. If your subject's face is in the photo, then you should get the person to sign a model release. But maybe their face is obscured or isn't visible. That's where things get a little more complicated. The use of silhouettes is a tried and true way to tell a story or showcase subjects in a new light. Although this technique can be used to obscure a subject's facial features, you may still need that person to sign a model release form. That's because the person could be identified by other distinguishing characteristics, such as unique tattoos or piercings. If those characteristics are shown in your photo and are unique enough to identify the person, then it's best to err on the side of caution and get a signed model release. The third question to consider is this. Are you selling the photo to someone else, such as a news agency? If you're selling the photo, a release is not needed because you're not the entity publishing the photo. The buyer, however, may ask for a model release so they can safely publish the work. The fourth question to consider is this. How will the photo be used? We saved the murkiest of questions for last. This is where things can get a little confusing. You may not need a signed model release if you're using photos for educational or informational purposes, such as a documentary, blog post, news broadcast, scholarly journal, or news article. However, if you are using a photo for one of those reasons, the final product shouldn't defame someone or invade their privacy. If your photo was taken in a public space, then you just need to consider potential defamation issues. You may not need a signed model release if you're using photos for exhibits, contests, presentations, fine art, or books. Photos intended to be used for these purposes have been recognized as educational uses and received legal protections in some cases. However, photos displayed prominently on a book cover may require a model release. Many adults don't want to see photos of minors used for commercial purposes, so it should be no surprise that a large number of parents will not allow photos of their children to be published. And apart from the obvious intent to protect a child from unwanted attention, there's a legal basis behind the need to get a guardian's signature. Someone who signs a release has to meet two key requirements. First, the person must understand it. This is known as informed consent. Second, that person must be an adult to have signing authority. For legal purposes, a majority of states define a minor as anyone younger than 18 years of age. Even if you're not sure if you'll be using a photo for commercial or marketing purposes, it's still a good idea to get a signed release. For instance, you may decide to revamp your website or use past photos for advertising campaigns to promote your services a year or two from now. It's a great idea to get those signed forms so you can use those photographs in a number of necessary ways. As far as verbal consent goes, you could get a model's verbal authorization in lieu of a physical form, but this approach can be problematic. If a model were to sue and claim you weren't given verbal permission, it may be difficult to prove otherwise. Though the absence of a signed form doesn't stop you from taking photos, it does hinder you from selling them or even using them to promote your work and services. Using an image without a model release may result in a lawsuit for publicizing a person's image without their consent. The person could also seek additional damages, so it's best to get that physical form signed. We've all seen stock images. In fact, here's one now. Look at that great stock photo. If you're shooting stock photography, do you need a model release form? Well, this answer can vary depending on where your photo was taken, but generally you should use a model release form when taking stock photos of people. Typically, you have little control over who uses the photo and how it's used. More importantly, many stock photo websites, including Adobe Stock, Shutterstock, and Getty Images, require photographers to get signed model release forms when easily recognizable people appear in their images. 
Ideally, you'll want the legal language in your model release form to be as broad as possible. This is particularly important when it comes to how the photos can be used and where they can be published. Doing so will give you quite a bit of leeway when the time comes to sell a photo or submit it to a stock photo agency. If you plan to have a successful photography career, a model release form will be a vital part of your photographer toolkit alongside memory cards, lenses, a tripod, batteries, and a speed light. If you plan on taking any photos of people, these forms will not only be handy, but will serve as a legal safeguard against potential lawsuits. Your form should work for you, not against you. It should provide you with the greatest freedom possible to use, sell, publish, and showcase your photos without consulting models or clients. If you're ever in doubt on whether or not a model release form is necessary, it's always best to err on the side of caution and just ask someone to sign a model release form. If you know how a photo will be used before it's even taken, never misrepresent facts to get a signature. This is not only invalidates your form, but places you in a vulnerable spot legally. A potential lawsuit is enough to conjure nightmares and keep you up at night. Not only that, but it can end a career faster than it would take for someone to sign a contract. If you follow legal guidelines and use forms at the right time, you'll find it easier to focus on capturing that perfect picture rather than any legal ramifications. Now that you're a model release form pro, you're ready to head out into the world, camera in hand, full of confidence in your photography business. Before you get to snapping, let's do a quick review. Once you've taken the necessary steps in creating and fine tuning your perfect model release form, make sure to consider these four key questions when deciding whether or not a project requires the use of your new release form. Where was the photo taken? Was the person in a private or public space? Is the person or their distinguishing characteristics easily recognizable in your photo? Are you selling the photo to someone else? If so, they may be the ones who need to ask for a model release form. How will your photo be used? Form usage depends on whether your photo is for educational, informational, commercial, or marketing purposes. With all that info, you can now confidently photograph people and skip the lawsuit. I'm Alex, and thanks for watching JotForm. See you next time. Thank you.